In this video, we'll look at adding interactions to your components in your design system. You can then use these interactive components in your design process to speed up your workflow and bring your designs to life. One of Figma's greatest features is the ability for you to take your components and screens and link them up using interaction points. You can then hit the present button and your design comes to life in a fully interactive prototype. This is the perfect way to show how you envision your design working to your stakeholders. If you've spent any time prototyping in Figma, you've probably ended up with a spaghetti of interaction points, which can get pretty confusing. This approach is great if you have a one-off prototype with components that you may not use again. But if you're using a design system, you may have to use these components multiple times. Having to create these interactive states for all your components over and over again can quickly suck the joy out of design for your project. This is where interactive components come in. Interactive components let you break down the interactive elements within a component set. The benefit of this is quicker prototyping at scale. You can uniformly define the behavior your component will have at the master level in your design system. For example, an interactive button may automatically switch to the hover state when you mouse over it, or a checkbox might switch between the checked and unchecked states when you click on it. The power of this comes through when you use components at scale. Imagine one of your designs has 24 card components. Within those cards, each one has two buttons, a checkbox, and a select list. If you had to manually add all the interaction points for all of the components within your cards, that would take you a long time and probably mean you'd uh, make a few errors along the way. By using interactive components, you could set up one of these card components with a checkbox, select list, and a couple of buttons in. Choose the interaction points for all of those elements and do it once, and you can reuse it as many times as you need. It sounds a little bit complicated, but once you've done it once, it gets much easier. So let's dig in and see how we can start to build out some interactive components. So back in our design system, and we're on the buttons page with the components we set up in a previous video. We have the various states for default, hover, clicked, and disabled. What we want to do is create an interactive version of this so that every time this component is used, it will behave like a real button on a website or app. The final output would look something like this. I have a button in a design that is using the master component from my design system. If I hover over it, the state automatically changes to the hover state, and if I click it, it will change to the click state. I only had to set these interactions once on the master component, and now everywhere that component is used, it will pull in the same behavior. Cool, so back in the design system buttons page, I have my components set. If I click the prototype tab up here, we can start to link up the various states. If I select the default button and hover over it, you'll notice that these new blue circular plus buttons appear. The first interaction I want is for the default button state to change to the hover button state when a user moves their mouse over it. If I drag the blue plus button circle and link the default state to the hover state, you'll see a new panel pop up called interaction details. Here we can tell Figma what we want to happen when someone interacts with the button's default state. By default, the action is set to on click, meaning that the interaction will happen when someone clicks on the button. We want to change this to when someone hovers over the button. So click here and change action to while hovering. The next section in the panel looks at what the button will change to when it's hovered over. As we use the drag option to set which state would be selected, this should be correct. It's the primary button, hover state, and small size. The next section looks at any animation you may want to apply when the button is hovered over. Figma gives you a limited amount of options. As this is a hover state, I'm going to add a dissolve, which means it will fade between the two states. You can now set up how that animation will behave with a load of options you can play with. I'll leave this as the default ease out for now. The last option we'll look at is the one with the number 300 in it. This option lets you set how quickly or slowly the animation will happen. I want this to be a fairly quick transition, so we'll set it to 150. The smaller the number, the faster the animation will happen. If we quickly test this, you can see that the button now changes when hovered over. Cool. Next, we want to add the behavior for when the button is clicked. Back in the design system, select the hover state and drag out your prototype blue circle and connect it to the click state. For the properties this time, I'll leave the action as on click and change the animation to instant. If we now test this one in presentation mode, you can see that when you click on the button, it will now change to the click state. It works pretty well, but it stays on the click state permanently, 
which is not how buttons in most websites work. We can fix that. Back in the design system again, select the click state this time and drag that up to reconnect with the default state. For this one, let's change the action to after delay, meaning that after a set period of time, the clicked button will change back to the default. I'll set the time to 150 milliseconds. Now if we test this again, you'll see that when the button is hovered over, it changes to the hovered state, and when it's clicked, it changes to the clicked. But after our little tweak, it will revert back to the default state. This mimics how a button would behave when used in a real website or app. Interactive button components is one way of many ways you could use this feature in Figma. You could add them to checkboxes, select list, radio buttons, tooltips, and more. And you could really push your creativity by trying to create interactive forms and cards. The major benefit of this approach is when you've set up your interactions once, you never have to do it again. And say, if you want to change anything about the interactions, all you have to do is jump in your design system and change the interaction points on a single component. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see if I can help. Cheers.